Amen. Let's all stand this evening. You're happy to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Let's just welcome him now as we enter into the worship. Amen. Of his presence. I was glad when they said, are you glad tonight to be in his house with God's people? Glad when they said unto me, oh, I was glad when they said unto me, well, let us go to the house of the Lord. Oh, I was glad when they said unto me, I was glad when they said unto me, Oh, I was glad when they said unto me, I'm going to go meet with God's people. Let us go to the house of the Lord. Keep me true, Lord. Well, keep me true, Lord. Jesus, keep me true. Keep me true, Lord Jesus, keep me true. There's a race that I must run. There are victories to be won. Give me power every hour to be true. Amen. Is that your prayer tonight? That's why we're back in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. To get a little closer to the Lord Jesus we certainly are all in that race tonight, aren't we? Amen. Let's just bow our heads then and bide his presence. It's so good to be back with his people tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, your people have come, Lord, returned, Lord, tonight in the evening service. And as your prophet said, there's just something about the evening service, Lord, as you walked with Adam in the cool of the evening, Lord. And Lord, we had a tremendous outpouring and teaching this morning. We're thankful, but we want another touch tonight, Lord. We want to hear from you. And we've come prepared. We set aside all the cares and the things that would just distract our minds, Lord, and help us to focus on you, worship you, Lord, and receive your word tonight. We ask it in your blessed name. The name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated tonight. Amen. You feeling good? Yes. Let's sing that key of D. Aren't you glad? He'll never leave you or forsake you. I would not be denied. Amen. Regardless of what God throws, he's there with us. Let's try this one tonight now. When pains of death ceased on my soul, unto the Lord I cried. Till Jesus came and made me whole, I would not be denied. I would not be denied, no, I would not be denied, oh, till Jesus came and made me whole, I would not be denied. As Jacob in the days of old, I wrestled with the Lord. And instead with the courage bold, I stood upon his word. And I would not be denied, I would not be denied, oh, till Jesus came and made me whole, I would not be denied. That old devil's a liar tonight. 
I will say Satan said my Lord was gone and would not hear my prayer. But he's a liar. But praise the Lord, the work is done. And Christ the Lord is here. Sing it with all your heart now. I would not be denied. I would not be denied. Till Jesus came and made me whole, I would not be denied. Yes, I would not be denied. Oh, no, I would not be denied. Oh, till Jesus came and made me whole, I would not be denied. Amen. Thank the Lord tonight. Amen. Let's sing that chorus one more time. As the little brothers are preparing to take the tithes and the offerings tonight. Amen. No, I would not be denied. No, I would not be Till Jesus came and made me whole, I would not be denied. Yes. Praise the Lord tonight. Let's just bow our heads and ask the Lord's blessing. Amen. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for all that you've given us, Lord. How we sing this song with joy, with experience in our heart. Oh, we've wrestled without you, Lord, with you, Lord. God, and you, we've overcome, Lord, by the blood of the Lamb this evening. We're so thankful, God, you'll never leave us or forsake us or deny your people, Lord. So we stand on your word. Bless the offering, the tithes, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Let's sing that key of F, brother. Amen. Yawn your way. Moses led God's children tonight. We're in that journey. Let's sing that one. Amen. Hmm. Well, Moses led God's children. Forty years he led them through the cold and through the night. And though they said, let's go back, Moses said, keep going. Canaan's land is just inside. You believe that tonight? And there will be no sorrows there in that tomorrow. We will be there by and by. Milk and honey's flowing there. There is where I'm going. just inside and though we walk through valleys and though we climb high mountains we cannot give up the fight we must be like Moses we must keep on going Canaan's land is just in sight and there will be no sorrows there in that tomorrow we will be there by and by 
honey's flowing. Milk and honey's flowing. That is where I'm going. Canaan's land is just inside. Sing it again now. Oh, there will be no sorrow. There will be no sorrow. There in that tomorrow. We will be there by and by. Oh, milk and honey's flowing. There, there is where I'm going. Canaan's land is just inside. Oh, hallelujah. Give him a praise offering tonight. Amen, brother, sister. It's just in sight. Amen. The promised land. Oh, just a little bit longer to labor, a little bit more to press the battle. But we've got to be like the saints of old. Just keep pressing. We've heard it preached so many times. Just keep pressing. Amen. Praise God. Key is C, Brother Steve. Singing on the determination tonight. And we're going to stay in that battle. You heard it this morning. Brother, sister, it's the battle is not ours, isn't it? It's the Lord Jesus. Amen. Kia C. Amen. Let's rejoice tonight. Amen. 49, I am determined to hold out to the end. Let's keep pressing the battle. Amen. Well, when I first found Jesus, something o'er me strolled like lightning it went through me and glory filled my soul salvation made me happy and took oh and when i meet old satan to him i always say well i am determined to hold out to the end oh jesus he's with me on him i can depend and i know i have salvation for i feel it in my soul oh i am determined to hold out to the end now satan was so angry he said he'd soon be back just let the path get narrow oh and he will lose the track but i'm so full of glory my lord i always find and i just say to satan old man get thee behind oh i am determined to hold out to the end jesus is with me on him i can depend and i know i have salvation for i feel it in my soul oh i am determined to hold out to the end now this old time religion it makes me sometimes shout I don't have time to gossip or any time to pout. They say that I'm too noisy, but when these blessings flow, I shout, oh, hallelujah, I want the world to know. Oh, I am determined to hold out to the end. Jesus, he's with me, on him I can depend, and I know I have salvation, for I feel it in my soul. I am determined to hold out to the end, and when I hear the trumpet, 
It's sounding in the sky. Oh, I see the mountains trembling. To heaven I will fly. For Jesus will be calling. There'll be no time to mend. Joy, I'll go up singing. For I've held out to the end. Oh, I am determined to hold out to the end. Oh, Jesus, he's with me. On him I can depend. For I know I have salvation. For I feel it in my soul. Oh, I am determined to hold. Let's sing that last verse again. Oh, when I hear the trumpet, when I hear the trumpet sounding in the sky and see the mountains trembling, to heaven I will fly, for Jesus will be calling. There'll be no time to mend. Oh, but with joy I'll go up singing. I've held out to the end. Let's all stand. I am determined to hold out to the end. Jesus, he's with me. On him I can depend, for I know I have salvation. I feel it in my soul. I am determined to hold out to the end. Amen. Praise God. Just remember that old devil, he's a liar. Amen. He's just a bluff. Amen. Praise God. Amen. As we take our needs before the Lord, amen. Let's just sing that. Have faith in God for the answer. Amen. And then we're going to ask our brother Keenan to pray for the request after I read him. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Do you believe this evening? Oh, have Faith in God. Yes, have faith in God. Oh, have faith in God for the end. Just have faith. Amen. In God. Amen. We have one, two requests this evening. Brothers and sisters, I'm asking prayer for my friend Anna, who lost her husband last month. Amen. My, that's from, thank you for my sister Annette. Certainly want to remember her tonight, Anna. And also from Sister Libby, just please pray for our traveling mercies for Josiah and the group he's traveling with from the group he's traveling with for a safe return home this evening. Amen. And every unspoken request, just by the raising of your hand, amen. God knows every need. God bless you, brothers and sisters. You know, uh, this morning, uh, I thank the Lord just to be able to wake up and just say thank you, Lord. Just uh, another day. And I'll, as I was getting ready this morning, I, out of nowhere, just a, uh, a peace just came from nowhere. And I, I just, it just took me back just to be thankful. When I heard Brother Stephen sharing that, I was going to give a testimony, but I just held it. And I wasn't going to share it. I'm still not. I'm not going to share it. But the Lord took me back to a call that I, I received from someone from five years ago. Well, I talked to them five years ago, and they just now touched bases with me again, my mother's cousin. But the striking thing was that the Lord put her on my heart, what she shared. 
And when she sent me something, and it shared, it, it just dovetailed right with what Brother Stephen was sharing. So I was just, my Lord, and this peace came. And I can hear Brother David from last weekend saying, you are the resurrection, the manifestation in your life. You are the resurrection in you, the Christ, the hope of glory in you. So I just kept thinking, just, my Lord, what will we do without your spirit? What will we do without the spirit of God? So I, 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 I just thank God for it. Just a, I, me, myself, I, I'll be in the streets, Los Angeles. Where would I be? I just, I just kept thinking this morning, do you realize what you're thankful for? So let's just bow our heads and just ask him. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, as that discussion this morning, Father, as we, I just, Lord, just waking up, Lord, and this day to continue on, Father, without your grace or your mercy, Father, Lord God, where will one be, Father? I just want to ask you, Lord God, for thy people, Father, that you would just forgive us of our shortcomings, our iniquities, our transgressions, Anything, dear Lord God, that will hinder you, Lord, hinder just the, the prayer or the movement of your spirit in the church, Lord. Dear Lord God, there may be one that want to be delivered, someone's salvation, Lord God, even, even a babe that just want to come unto you, Lord God. We just want to have a pure heart, Lord, that we may approach your throne, Father. And dear gracious Father, Lord God, by your blood, your, by the blood of Jesus Christ, your son, Father, we're able to come forth and come before you in boldness. And dear Father God, for this petition, Lord God, for thy brother Josiah, Lord God. Father, as he's, he's, he's coming back home, dear Lord God, and you allowed him to go, Lord God, and with whoever he may be with, would you grant traveling mercies, Father, and bring him back home safely, Father, Lord God, under your protection, Lord God, that he may reunite with his family, Lord God, of his natural family and his spiritual family, Lord God. And dear Lord God, we want to just ask you, Lord God, for the other petition, Father, Lord God, for this one, Lord God, for Anna, Lord God, whose husband, dear Lord, for Father, Lord, for uh, it's very touching, dear Lord God, but the great hope is what comforts you, Lord. Your spirit is what comforts you. Many are afflicted upon the land, Father. Many are losing loved ones, friends. Situations occur, dear Lord God, but without you is the great loss. But with you, Lord God, there's hope, Father. By faith, Lord God, we, we want to just believe, Lord God, in your word, Lord God, if we, if we approach thy throne and ask what we will, dear Lord God, that you would grant it, Lord God. So for this Anna, dear Lord God, for Lord God, her other half, Lord God, what, was, what you had brought together, Lord God, has went forward, Lord, and he's departed, Father, and a gentleman probably, Lord God, and he means a lot to Anna, Lord. And we just want to ask you, Father, that you would just bring comfort to her heart, Lord. Would you just, Lord God, for you can only feel that voidness there, Lord God. And it's very uh, a sensitive situation for one, Father. But dear Lord God, you, you know the feebleness of a human being, Father. You know, Lord God, those things, Lord, when one is lonely, Lord God, one is suffering, one is depressed, Lord God. But you also know, Lord God, that your spirit brings joy, Father. So in this time of sorrow, Lord God, may there be a hope in this one's Anna's heart that she know the Lord Jesus Christ. And dear Lord God, if she doesn't, Lord God, would you plan in her heart, Father? Would you plan in her heart, Father, that hope, Lord God, that if she's anchored with him, that she would see her husband again. May that you grant these things, Father God. May, we, may that you be with the laity, be with the people, Father God. Would you grant, Lord God, the things that are upon their heart, Lord God. And dear Father, Lord God, a special request, Lord, for thy little sister, Jessamay, Lord. She's dear, Lord God, she, she loves you with all her heart, Lord God. And 
at the at her age at such I believe she's eight years old, Lord God. She wants to give her a heart and be baptized, Lord. Dear Lord God, I ask, Lord, would you just fill her with abundance of joy, Father? That, Lord, that along the way, Father, she will just love you each and every day, and you will commune with her, Lord God, and just raise her, Lord. I thank you, Lord God, for her mother, Lord God, Sister Jasmine, Lord God, and her family, Sister Cielo, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, for them, Father, and may you be with thy people, Father, and be with the services and be with thy musicians, Father, Lord God, and may you just use thy brother, Lord God, thy brother Raul, as he bring forth the words of life. In Jesus Christ's name, we ask these things. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. You may be seated this evening. Let's just, so we're just preparing for the word of the Lord. Our brother will be bringing the message. So as he's praying, he asked to sing that little song, What a Mighty God Jesus Is. Isn't he a mighty God? Amen. Key of F, I believe we sing that one. Brother Steve is, amen. Let's just pull with our brother now as he prepares to come. Amen. What a mighty God. He's worthy of worship and praise. What a mighty God Jesus is. What a mighty God Jesus is. Heaven. stand now. Sing it as our brother comes. Amen. Oh, what a mighty God Jesus is. God. What a mighty God. How many happy to be out to the house of the Lord this evening? Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Let's just sing one more song, brother. Let's sing that you're more beautiful than diamonds. Amen.
God. Thank you, Lord. just want to greet everybody in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you, church. Amen. And all those that are listening online, I just pray that would, uh, this would be a blessing to you. Um, God bless you. And um, while we're standing, if we can uh, just take our Bibles, we're just going to hit on a uh, familiar topic here this evening. Um, just kind of feel a burden here. Uh, and let's go to Romans chapter 12. And let's just uh, start with uh, verse 1. Um, scripture reads, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, uh, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. Let's just bow our heads. Father, we just thank you this evening, Lord, Father, for this another opportunity, Lord, uh, to just come to your house, Lord, and fellowship, Lord, around your word and your people, Father, and Help us tonight, Lord. Help me to get out of the way this evening. Just uh, speak to your people, Lord. Uh, we ask these things, Father, uh, in your name, Jesus Christ. Uh, amen. You can be seated. Amen. Um, and I picked this topic here this evening because I, I believe it's um, it's a desire that we all have. Amen. Uh, that's why we're here. Amen? Because we don't want to be the same person, right? I mean, we all have faults. We all have failures. Amen? We all have little things, what do they call them? Idiosyncrasies, this, that, talking out of turn, this, and, you know, can't um, have issues that, um, and we, we want to be better Christians, better believers. We want to be a blessing to the, to the body, blessing to other people. Amen? Uh, we want to shine the light. Amen? Amen. And, uh, and, and if, if you did not have that desire, you wouldn't be here this evening. Amen? Amen. Brother, but tonight we serve a living God that is able, brother, sister, to come down and meet that need in your life, meet that need in my life tonight. Amen? Amen. We serve a living God who made a promise here in the word. Amen? That uh, he can help us uh, in that area. Glory be to God. And um, Brother Brandon preached a message um, called Power Transformation. And I've been uh, going over that, study in that. Um, and um, he likens it, he takes some, he takes some types here. Um, for example, this earth, we read in Genesis 1 1 there how it was just dark and it was chaos. Uh, but God said, let there be light. He said, let there be light. Um, and there was light. And uh, how that God began to um, form this earth, which the scripture says a day with the Lord is a thousand years is like a day with the Lord. So we have that reference. So the first 6,000 years, God created 
uh, what we see. Now, I mean, they, I know science says it's what, four and a half million or billion years old or something. And, um, but see, that's not in Genesis. And that may, and that, I believe they, they got truth there. You know, they have things that, but see, but that's not what Genesis is talking about there. God's talking about when he started his creation, when he started to go. You know, it's like a contractor. See, there might be a piece of land out there. Might have been out there for 20, 30, 40 years, see? But he says, you know what? I'm going to build something on that property there. And he buys that property. He goes and gets that property. Uh, he, he gets the architect or whoever, the engineers, and they go out and they start the drawings. And then they go out there and they break ground. See, there's your Genesis 1-1. <laughs> You see, it might, have been, it might have floated through space for millions and billions and billions of years after the Big Bang, but one time God stopped it and said, okay, let there be light. And, and God started it there. Amen. So, you know, people get that, oh, how can God create this world in, in six 24-hour uh, days? See? But um, the scripture bears it out, see. And... Um, so how, how that, uh, uh, when God started his creation and uh, God brought it up from the uh, uh, botany life there and uh, kept bringing it on up day after day and, and uh, got to the animal life, see, and then finally there on the sixth day, uh, God created man there in the, in the Garden of Eden. Man inside that perfect Garden of Eden. God took, took him uh, that, that time, that 6,000 years, those 6,000 years, uh, and God transformed it into a Garden of Eden. He transformed it from that darkness and that chaos into a Garden of Eden. How did he do that? He did it by his word. He did it by his word, uh, and it obeyed him. Amen. It obeyed him. And um, Paul says here, he says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. Be ye transformed. So whatever your condition is tonight, you have a chance to be transformed. Whatever your situation is tonight, that situation has an has, has a, a, a opportunity to be transformed. Whatever we're looking at this evening, that can be transformed. Amen? How? By his word. Now he says here, uh, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now Brother Branham interprets that, renewing of your mind. And he says, um, he says, what you thought to be so precious. He said... Lay that aside. You know, lay that aside. See? And accept his word. Believe his word. See, laying that aside, what you thought to be precious. It's just, it's being obedient to the word. Being obedient to the word. When, um, oh, let me stay here. Brother Bam says here a message, power transformation. He says, renewing of your mind the things that you once thought upon to be precious. Lay that aside and be transformed to something else. What you was one time to what you are now by the renewing of your mind. Now, he's talking about those precious things. 
that one thing that you thought was so precious. Now, this is following him here. He says, sometimes you have to separate from everything, from everything that's dear on earth. That might be smoking. That might be drinking. That might be carousing. That might be sin. That might be uh, a man wearing the woman's of a garment, woman wearing the garments of a man. That might be smoking. That might be taking a casual drink. That might be trimming the hair. Uh, you can fill in the blanks, brother, sister. But the question is, do you want to be transformed? Do you want to be transformed? That's the question. Right? Sometimes you have to separate everything that's dear on earth to you. Take your position that God has called you to. I'm sure you can read between the lines what I'm saying. See, sometimes the very dearest person on earth, you have to shake hands with them and take your position in Christ to where God has called you. But what is God doing? Transforming you. That's part of transformation, brother. That's part of what you're desiring, of what you are asking. That is one of the steps to get into your goal of being transformed. See that? And take your position in to where God has called you. But what is he doing? Transforming you to what you was. Maybe a daughter or a son or whatever it is from a lovely family. Sometimes he places you somewhere else because it's his way of doing it. See, by the renewing of your mind to obey the word of God. Regardless of what the price is. Wow. Let me just give you an example that I went through. I was at my job. And I drive uh, equipment, um, the forklift. And um, they have different sizes of lifts, smaller ones and larger ones. And uh, I had hit the top of a door one time because I didn't realize the size of the lift I was on. And uh, so it, they had to replace it. And um, they had to replace the, whatever you call it, the outer part of it. Um, and I got a talking to. I got a talking to. Deserved it. Um, but I still kept my job. The time goes on and goes on and goes on, whatever, months, maybe a year or so. Me and the boss are out working. And uh, I'm always careful, man, when I get on a lift, okay, this one's good for the doors. I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay. So we're doing it, working outside on a job and... And uh, I have to go to lunch. I have to take my lunch. So I go take my lunch. And um, boss comes in and tells me. He says, hey, uh, the battery died on the forklift. So I had to switch it. I'm thinking, well, okay. Finished my lunch. I go back. Start working. Um, and I didn't realize anything. But I thought, why, you know, when I was there, I thought, why did he tell me he's switching the battery? Just go get another lift instead of switching the battery. And uh, I thought, well, maybe there's not enough lift. Well, that makes sense. Okay. So I go back out to work. I get on the lift. I start doing my job. I finish the job, right? Um, come back in. Well, guess what? I hit the top again. Pow. Oh, my goodness. I don't even know how that happened. Oh, my goodness. And I was dead set. I run into my um, supervisor. I told him, I hit the top of the door. I got to go tell the manager. And uh, was, I can't lie. Right? Boy, my job is precious to me. But I can't lie. And, uh, and I'm glad. You know what? I was maybe 20 feet from the manager and my supervisor. I told my supervisor. 
and my supervisor said, whoa, 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 wait a minute, don't, don't tell him yet. Let's go see if we can fix it. Let's go see if we can fix it. So he actually repairs it uh, kind of halfway, and then he gets another mechanic to, to do the rest. And uh, so everything kind of smoothed over, right? But I was dead set on walking in there and telling my manager, knowing what it was going to cost me, knowing that I was going to get a chewing out, knowing that I would probably get written up, if not lose my job. I don't know. Knowing that, and, I, and he says, well, well, wait a minute, we're going to say that you were carrying a large load and you scraped the top. And I said, I said, I can't do that. I got to go in there clean. I got to just come clean with them right now. And he was kind of like, well, wait a minute, don't, don't, don't go do it. Don't hold on. <laughs> he was actually, I, I believe the Lord sent him there to stop me. And uh, yeah, I, but I had to lay, you don't, you don't think that fear grabbed me? I was stressing. But I had to lay that aside. Now, I'm not trying to sit there, I'm a do-gooder. I make faults every day. I make mistakes. And I'm, that's why I'm here. I want to get closer. I want the power of transformation in my life. I don't want to be that same person. Right? why I'm here. I'm not trying to tell you that I'm such a great person. No, I was nervous. I was shaking, man. I was like, oh my God, oh my goodness. And um, so I said, I got to come clean with him. And he just kind of, wow, okay. So I don't know. He kind of smoothed it over and, and one manager got upset. But you know what? No manager ever approached me about it. Somehow he got, he got it fixed between him and another mechanic, and I don't know what he told him. I don't know what he told him. And I don't really want to ask questions at this point. But when I was going back on the lift, I said, Lord, please. I was praying. I was praying, said, Lord, please. Oh, just make this go away. And he made it go away. He made it go away. I don't know. I was, yeah. He made it go away. But, brother, I, I think uh, the Lord helped me, you know? I mean, I could have been in trouble, but I would have been at peace. Yeah, I would have been at peace. I would have took a shellac and but I would have been at peace. Whew. So I had to lay that aside. I had to lay that thought aside, right? I had to lay it aside. He says here, Brother Bam says, um, let me get back to this here. Regardless of what the price is, see, things don't come. It didn't call. Our redemption wasn't cheap thing. Wasn't a cheap thing. It was the Son of God had to die. See, it isn't things of value. It, uh, he says, things of value come of a great price. To bring this message, see, this is what Brother Brown said. To bring, he's preaching, to bring this message, it wasn't easy, see. No, it isn't. I had to forsake everything that was dear to me, even my own people. Wow. He's talking about the message of the hour. Yeah. 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 He, he had to go tell his elders that I was visited by an angel. And this angel told me that I'm going to go preach before potentates and kings and go around the world. And, and they mocked him. You uneducated? You can't, you have a, a Kentucky grammar, a seventh grade education. How are you going to go around the world? How are you going to do that? And they, they mocked him. And he had, the, he was, visions were breaking on him and God was speaking to him. So he had to lay their advice down and go the way the angel of the Lord, the way God's word told him to, the way God told him to go. So he says here, he says, to bring this message, it wasn't easy. See, no, it isn't. I had to forsake everything that was dear to me, even my own people, everybody but you see the value of it is. See, uh, is to do the will of God and to do that which knowing that there is something in me when they used to say, well, they was going to put me away and thought I lost my mind, baptizing in the name of Jesus Christ, contrary to the church and all these things. <coughs> wow. 
Lord. Yes, amen. Wow. Brother Ram says here, that's what God did for Adam and Eve. He created this Garden of Eden. He had spoke it. It was in his mind. And when he says, and when he says it, then it has to happen. It has to happen. Brother says, you lay those things aside and, and, and you obey the Lord. I obey the Lord, brother. A transformation is going to happen. Transformation is going to happen. See, he had spoken. See, uh, bear that on mind now. What he says, it must happen, and he can't. Nothing can can hinder it. Nothing can keep it from happening. There is nothing can keep it from happening. God said so. That settles it. God said it's going to happen. Wow! Remember, brother, when God said those two angels down there to get Lot. And he said, come, Lot, come hither, Lot. He says, and let, and if you don't, unless you don't come, he, says, we, he goes, we, we can't do anything. This fire that's going to fall on Sodom, it can't happen until you get out. <laughs> it can't happen until you get out. It can't happen. Look, look what's happening in the world right now. And you got a war in Ukraine and Russia. You got a war over there in Gaza. You got over China over there wanting to invade Taiwan. Uh, this, worth, this planet is just, uh, it's a tinderbox, man, waiting for somebody to, to throw a match. It's, it's just ready to go. But see, all these things are, are, are taking place. There's signs in the heavens. All, and you know why, brother and sister? It's, it's, it's happening. Why? Because... Somebody's getting ready. Somebody's getting, somebody's putting on the wedding garment. Oh, okay, it's getting a little closer. Somebody's putting on a little wedding. Somebody's getting prepared. Somebody's getting up the stature of that perfect man. Some, brother, sister, there's going to be a bride. Brother, and, and you know what, brother? Before all that can go, she has to be out of here. Just like it was back then. Lot, nothing can happen unless you get out, Lot. It ain't fire, it ain't gonna fall till you get out, Lot. Brother, when you see these things happen, it just to me it just shows, brother, that the bride is getting ready. Somebody's getting ready. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> yes, sir. He says, bear that in mind. Now, what he says must happen. See, nothing can hinder it. Nothing can keep it from happening. There is nothing can keep it from happening. God said so. That settles it. God said it's going to happen. Now, he had all this in his mind. He said, let there be. He was sowing seed. When he said, let there be, he was sowing seed. Because the word of God is a seed. He was sowing seed. Let there be, let there be, let there be. And he knew it was going to be that way because he cannot change. He cannot change. He says, now that gives us faith then. And what he said here, it's going to be. So let's let that seed fall into our hearts. Oh, 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 brother. The word of God is a seed. When the word of God goes forth, it doesn't come back void. Brother, sister, that's where the word of God comes. In. Let it come into our hearts. That we might be the bedding ground of that sea into our hearts and let us act out this place that he has placed us in in the last days. Let the seed fall in our hearts, Lord. Let thy word fall in my heart. Amen. Abraham and Sarah, they had to lay their thoughts aside. Said, Abraham, you're going to have a child, Abraham. And they were well past the age of bearing child children. So, but you're going to have a child. According to the time of life, you're going to have a child, uh, Abraham. Abraham and Sarah, 
uh, they, they laid their, their thoughts aside. And the power of transformation transformed their bodies back into a, a young man and a young lady. <laughs> that was the power of transformation. Transformed. They, they were well past the age of childbearing. God had to make them back into a young man and a young lady again. And, and I say, oh, no, brother, that's because they're, they're long age lives and things like that. No, when Sarah goes down to the king, uh, that king wanted, out of all his virgins, he wanted Sarah to be his, his wife. You think he's going to want a, a, an 80-year-old lady when he has all those 20-year-old virgins over there? You think he's going to? No, 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 that king wanted Sarah. And Abraham knew it, too. He says, oh, okay, Sarah, you, <laughs> you just... Uh, you know, you just say you're my sister, and, uh, you know, they won't cut off my head. But uh, God took care of all that, see. Yeah. God took care of that, see. Amen. But that was the power of transformation, see. Yeah. He believed him. He believed God. He believed him that he was going to have a child. Yeah. See, Israel, when they were on the march, see, God transformed that Red Sea. God transformed that Red Sea so that they could walk through. God, the children of Israel, they were mud daubers. They were slaves in Egypt. But the power of God transformed those slaves into conquerors. Yeah, wherever the feet of your, wherever your feet step, Joshua, that land I give you, Joshua. Yeah, they obeyed the word of God. God, tra God transformed them from slaves to conquerors. Moses. God transformed him from a defeated fugitive. To a deliverer. Amen. Amen. He was a, yeah, a fugitive, defeated. Thought, man, I bit off more than I can chew. I'm just going to stay back here in the desert and just keep a low profile. Uh, but God had different plans for him. Yeah. See? Amen. 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 Jesus. Jesus transformed the stormy seas to calm seas. He transformed the water into wine. He transformed the blind to receive their sight. He transformed the cripple so he could walk. He transformed the maniac so he could be sane and have his right mind in peace. He transformed them. The power of transformation. He transformed the dead into the living. He raised the dead. He transformed the lame to walk. He transformed the deaf to hear. See, because the life in the Lord Jesus is that transforming power. It is that transforming power. You know, in, in the Old Testament, they had the, the law. You know, Paul separates law and grace and how that the law can't justify anybody. See, can't save, justify. See, but uh, grace, the New Testament. But in the Old Testament, they had to live by that law, and they could not keep that law. They couldn't keep it. They'd fail, they'd backslide, they'd fail, they'd backslide, they'd fail. They'd get up, they'd backslide, they'd fail, they'd forgive them. He'd allow their enemies to overcome them. Then he'd deliver them. They couldn't keep it. Yeah. 
it's like, like you have a, a blueprint and all the specs, the law. But there's no dynamics to make those specs work, operate. There's no dynamics to it. But see, John 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. I'll just go over and read that real quick. Read here, John, first, uh, well, yeah, first John here, first uh, chapter one. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us, that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that, that ye also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Christ. And these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. I'm going to back up a little bit. Verse 2. For this life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. So they had the Old Testament in the Scriptures. They had the laws of Moses, the Ten Commandments. But there was no life that could live that. And here he's saying, we've seen that life. We, the, 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 the life that will live that word, we've seen it walking in flesh. They've seen that life walking in flesh. It was keeping the word, staying, staying with the word. It was the dynamics that was required for the mechanics. It was the dynamics that was required for the mechanics. And they seen that life manifested. Now, even though, brother, sister, they were under Jesus' ministry for three and a half years, these disciples. And we just read there that they seen that life. They were excited about it. But there was still no transforming power being transferred into their life. There was no transforming power. They were witnessing the transforming power. They were seeing the transforming power. And Jesus knew that. And they were going through a process. They were being justified. They were being sanctified. And when, it, when, when he came and he was taken prisoner to go to Calvary, they all forsook him. 
showing in them that they didn't have any transforming power in him, in them. They didn't have any transforming power in them. They heard every message he preached. They were in all the services. Yeah. They were, they, they were with him. Ate with him. Slept with him. And um, so when he commands them to go to the upper room for power from on high, The Lord wants to put, he wanted to put that transforming power in them. He wanted them to have that transforming power experience. Now, they did have an experience. They saw things that other people didn't see. They witnessed things that other people didn't uh, uh, um, witness. But they still didn't have that transforming power in them. That's why he commanded them to go up on high into Jerusalem, to go there uh, in Jerusalem and to receive the power from on high. They were kind of nervous when they went in there. Probably didn't want to make a lot of noise, commotion. But brother, sister, when the power of God came in like a riding, mighty rushing wind, they didn't care what kind of noise they made. It transformed their lives. It transformed them from uh, uh, scared disciples, brother, into believing disciples, into bold disciples. It transformed them. It transformed their life. Amen? <coughs> Praise be to God, brother, sister. Yes, sir. Oh, it transformed him. Jesus said, you must, ye must be born again. He said, oh, man, I remember who preached that one time. Was it Brother, I don't know. He said, if you get anything right, if you didn't graduate, if you didn't get your, uh, if you didn't get your master's degree, make sure you get that right. If you didn't get your bachelor's degree, make sure you get that right, that be born again. If you didn't get a seventh grade education, make sure you get that right, brother. Make sure you get it right. You must be born again. Amen? Yes. Yeah, he, uh, they were transformed, brother. Transformed into scared disciples, into bold disciples. Amen. The power of transformation. Amen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read a quote here. Let's go to a scripture here real quick. Are you thankful that the Lord sent the Lord sent a message, brother, to, to tell you these things? Malachi 4. For behold, one, for behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble, and the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them 
leaves them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in its wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall, and ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded them in Horeb, uh, for all Israel with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I send you Elijah the prophet before the coming and the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers of the children and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Amen. And that scripture there is, and turn the hearts of the children to their fathers. That's the message that, we, that we're following right there. The anointing of Elijah uh, on this ministry right here uh, that's turning the heart of the children to their fathers. When John the Baptist came, he turned the heart of the fathers to the children. That was the anointing of Elijah on John the Baptist. And he rebuked those religious leaders in that day. And now, yes, and uh, in this day, uh, Turn the heart of the fathers, turn the heart of the uh, fathers to the children, and that end, that's about 2,000 years. The heart of the children to their fathers. Where that other anointing of Elijah would come in this day to turn the heart of those Pentecostal children uh, of our age back to the faith of the fathers because they had gotten away from the word. He had gotten away from the word. God had restored it through justification, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Ghost, see, through Luther, Wesley, and the uh, early uh, Azusa Street, uh, turn of the century Pentecostal movement, see. Now, they had already denominated by the time Brother Branham come on the scene preaching. So that anointing is to turn them back, to rebuke that age, to return them back to, to the... Uh, to the fathers. Now I'm going to read this here out of the Ephesian age. And you, you know, to yourself, and you just kind of think, wow, is this the anointing of Elijah rebuking the, the Pentecostal children? back to the original faith of the Father? Let's see if that would sound like it. Ephesian church age. Let's break the word down. Found out what we got before we go any farther. The word Nicolaitan is kind of foreign thing to me. I got every Greek lexicon that I could find. Nicolaitan comes from the word Nico. Okay, here, Nico, overthrow. See, Nicolaitans, overthrow or conquer the laity. What they were trying to do here was trying to take the church where God had pastors and the Spirit of God moving gifts in the church of the living God. They were having a doctrine start. This he's talking about the first century church. That spirit of Antichrist was already rising up in that first century church. Because the God said he hated, he hates it yet today. Nicolaitan, overcome, overthrow the laity, the laity of the church. How many knows the laity is the church? All right, overthrow or conquer or take place of the laity. In other words, Take all the sacredness, all the power from the church, and put it over on priests. Brother Branham is rebuking that. Because the anointing is not just for the, con for the preacher, it's for the audience. In other words, take all the sacredness of the power from the church and put it over on the priests. Let the congregation live the way it wants to, but the priest is the Holy One, taking the Holy Ghost away from the people. He says, taking the Holy Ghost away from the people with signs and wonders following them. And take that away and give them a holy priesthood, taking away the Holy Ghost and swapping it for a priesthood. See, they can only talk. The Dark Ages, they, they could only, you, nobody could understand the word. Nobody, they didn't read, they didn't have books. Only the priests had it, and you had to go to them, and they told you what it said. And See, as it went on, see. 
taking away the Holy Ghost and swapping it for a priesthood. You see what it was? It was, it finally became in this church, it was deeds in this place to become a doctrine and Thyatira is took over and when Luther come out, it couldn't stay that way. It had, this is it. it went right back and took it over again. Luther came out and then he died and they denominated. See? Bishops, cardinals, archbishops, who in the world's the head of God's church but him? Does that sound like the spirit of Elijah? That's the spirit of Elijah. Himself, amen. Who? I feel religious. The Holy Ghost was sent to rule the church. Holy Ghost was sent to rule the church, not just the preacher. He says, the whole congregation, just a preacher be holy. It's all the church has the Holy Ghost. All the church has the Holy Ghost. And instead of that, instead of having the spirit to make it, they've taken a little wafer and a cracker and some wine and call it the Holy Eucharist, which means Holy Spirit. How in the world... He says, how in the world can a cracker and a piece of wine be? Now watch, see, he's talking to these Pentecostals. And some of you Pentecostals, wow. Now he's rebuking the Pentecostal children. This is Elijah turning the hearts of the children to their fathers. Brother, you have to place the word. You have to place the word of God, brother, sister. And it has to be placed right. He goes, and some of you Pentecostals, the great overs. See, they didn't have bishops, priests, and cardinals, but they had other titles. And he names them the great overseer. Right? Let him come down, the general overseer. He'll tell you whether you can have healing service here or not. Ha ha ha. The Holy Ghost is the one to say that or not. God's eternal word. And he's preaching to the Pentecostals because they took that same form. They didn't know it. They had light. Well, Brother Brennan, we believe that the Bible teach baptized in Jesus' name, but the general overseer said if we started that in our church, he'd kick us out. Go ahead. That's right. I'd rather be kicked out here than kicked out there. So if you take anything out of here, you're going to get kicked out there anyhow. So you might as well get kicked out here if he's going to kick you out here. <laughs> you'll, be kicked, you'll be kicked in there. If he, <laughs> he kicks you out here, you'll be kicked in there. He says, um, so that's just the same thing to stay right with it. We want to be right. Oh, my, it's a serious thing, brother. We've got to get these things right. We'll never be able to have a church until God gets a foundation to lay on it. He'll never build his church upon a bunch of nonsense. He has to come on his word or he won't come at all. See, right on his word. He says, how a man to hold up a little church doctrine somewhere because their organization wouldn't agree with it. Selling your birthrights for a mess of pottage. Esau, you miserable hypocrite. That's right. Selling your birthrights for a mess of pottage, for a mess of denomination, a mess of organization that God hates. Just remember, you say organization, God hates it. Wow. And that's the way of a true prophet, brother, sister. God hates it. It's the thing that separated brothers and broke down. There's a many a Methodist Baptist Presbyterian tonight would like to have a fellowship around the table of God. But if they do, they get kicked out. They get kicked right out the first time they start into it. That's exactly right. Mama belonged to it and they just grandchild to begin with. Oh, see, I don't care what mama belonged to. Mama lived in all the light she had in her day. You're living in another day. Yes. 
says, but the church always wants to look back. See what Wesley said, what Moody said, what Sanka said. All these things are possible to them that believe. Let's look ahead. Only thing in the Bible, look backward. Do you know what kind of an animal always look back? The lowest life there is. How many knows what the lowest life there is? See, a frog. See, a frog is the lowest life there is, and a man is the highest life there is, and a frog looks backwards. I don't like that old low life. I want to look forward, believing, trusting, walking in the light as he is in the light. Amen? <clears throat> but people live today like they was going, this is the only thing there was. Live here on earth, that's all. You don't realize you got a soul that's going to leave here and go somewhere. And you seal your destination right here. Right here. The way you live and the way you do, out holding grudges and mean and everything. And then run to church, oh mercy, whoa, shame on you. You bring a reproach upon the cause of Christ. Isn't that right? Don't, don't we do it? The, the bootlegger ain't hurting the church, isn't that? It isn't the prostitute that's hurting the church. It's the people who profess to be Christians that's hurting the church. We know what the bootlegger is and, the, uh, and what the prostitute is. But when our sisters, wow, see, he's preaching to Pentecostals. Listen, to, when our sisters dress like prostitutes, that's different. That is what hurts the church. When the man drinks like a bootlegger, well, that's what hurts the church. They're professing to be a Christian, and they do that. The people look for, for you, uh, that name, see, let him that even names the name of Jesus Christ, see, to, to depart from sin. Because it's time for the churches to repent. It's time for Pentecost to get a lot of little polished scholars out of the pulpit preaching to the Pentecostal churches. That was the last move God did. He sent Luther with justification, sent Wesley with the message of sanctification, sent out the pouring, the restoration of the gifts there uh, at the turn of the century, Azusa, and, and then they uh, made these Pentecostal churches. They denominated and they organized and then God sends the messenger to go in there and rebuke them, to turn their hearts back to what they originally had. It's time for the churches to repent. It's time for Pentecost to get a lot of these little polished scholars out of the pulpit and get the old-fashioned preacher in there that'll tell you the truth, not pat around and use the church for a meal ticket big wages or something like that, and psychology and a few horse races and soup suppers and everything else. It's time to get back to the gospel. I don't care how little you are where two or three are gathered. Man, that's amazing. Huh? That, that fits right in here, brother. Sister. That fit. That's, what, that's what I see. That's, yeah. Who, who preaches like that? Who opened those things up? Who had the, the signs and wonders, brother, the, the vindications, brother, the, the, the pillar of fire? When this picture was taken, this one here in 1950 in uh, Houston, Texas, there was a, a scoffer, uh, somebody mocking uh, Brother Branham, had a photographer take like seven or eight pictures, I believe, and, uh, and, and, and they were mocking him. The guy was, um, his last name was Best, I believe, right? And he would hold his fist up to Brother Branham's face. Okay, take a picture of me. Because he didn't believe in miracles. Brother Branham was preaching Jesus Christ and yesterday, today, yesterday, today, and forever. Uh, Jesus Christ heals today like he did then. And this, this other person, he was some other denomination, didn't believe in miracles. And so he was mocking Brother Branham. He would make a fist right in Brother Branham's face. Okay, take this picture. Okay, now take this picture. Okay, take this picture. And he had a photographer taking all these pictures. And every one of those pictures came out blacked. And this is the only one that came out, that came out uh, developed. The pillar of fire over Brother Brenham's head. That's the only one that came out. Was that? Amen. Um, I, I want to touch on something. I kind of, I know I'm kind of going over the map here, but um, let's go to Matthew here.
Okay, let's just start to Matthew chapter 4, verse 13. Scripture reads, And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the seacoast, in the borders of Zabulon and Nathalim, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by, uh, was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, The land of Zebulun and the land of Nephilim, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan of Galilee, of the Gentiles, the people which sat in great darkness saw great light. And to them which sat in the region uh, and, and shadow of death, light is sprung up. Wow. Well, Jesus that life, that transforming power, that transforming life uh, that was in the Lord, that uh, it was um, in the Lord Jesus Christ, as he was walking through that land, how he was healing the people, he was transforming their lives, transforming the, the blind to see, the deaf to hear, the lame to walk, the dead to live. Brother, he was, uh, it, was, it was a great light, the Bible says. It was great light. The Bible says in Zechariah, in the, in the end time, the evening time, there shall be light. There shall, there shall be light in the evening time. And we know that when the sun rises in the east, it's the same light. It's the same sun. And it rises, it goes to noon, and it sets in the west. It's the same sun. It's the same light. The gospel light that was preached 2,000 years ago in the corporal body of the Lord Jesus Christ, that gospel light was prophesied to come back in our day. But in this day, that light sprung up through Malachi 4. That's the gospel light that it came through, Malachi 4. It prophesies of that. He says here, Leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the seacoast, and the borders of Zabulon and Nethem. He's going through the different towns. And that light, that light, that transforming power is being witnessed. Like we read in John, we saw that light. We saw that life. It's being witnessed. It's a great light. On this day, April 7th, from Voice of God, in 1950, Brother Branham was in London, England. They were witnessing that great light. He was going around. That prophecy that they mocked Brother Branham, they made fun of him, saying, you're never going to fill him. You can't speak. You have no education. Well, it came to pass. He did go around the world. It came to pass. He says, on this day, Brother Branham visited London, England, where he visited the room of a lady in South Africa who was dying of stomach cancer. She asked that he would pray that God would let her die. Instead, the prophet told her that she would live. She was completely healed. That was that same gospel light that shined in the old, and in 2,000 years, it shined today. <coughs> Here, he, Louisville, Kentucky, he just finished meetings. Brother Brandon was in Shreveport, Louisiana. See, first five scheduled meetings. Here on this day, in 1956, he was in um, at the Philadelphia Church Lane Tech School Auditorium. 1959, Brother Brandon was speaking at the Angelus Temple. What was he doing? That great light, brother, just like he was walking in those cities right there, that light, sh it sprung up, it shined, brother, sister. It was shining in those, it was shining in those towns, it was shining in those cities. It was manifesting that light. It was transforming power, brother, sister. It was transforming here. He was going around city to city. God was sending him around. God was getting his light out. April 6, 1949, Brother Brandon was in Fort Wayne, Indiana. 1956, he was in Chicago preaching. Nineteen fifty nine, Angelus Temple again. Here he is uh, in New York in 1950. He was preaching.
Well, you get it, right? I mean, I can go on. You know, when they put these pictures out, it, 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 I, I, I would see all these locations, all these locations. And the scripture just popped out right there, that great light. That great light that shined in the east, and that great light is shining in the west. And just as Jesus walked through those towns performing uh, uh, healing signs, wonders, manifesting that transforming power, that happened in our age. Because it was promised to come. Amen. I don't know, that's kind of, that's kind of, excites to me, that's a little nugget. Yeah, wow. Um, okay, I just got, I'm going to close here, church. I'm sorry, keeping you here. Um, let's go one more quote here. Message in the Power of Transformation, Brother Bram says, Now we're not a perfect people. We make our mistakes. We do things that's wrong, but you see, love covers all of that. We're willing, when we see our mistakes, to come back and apologize to one another. Yeah, that's that's warriors. That's really men and women that's gallant. Any man can go on the battlefield that's got enough nerve to walk out there, but when he gets knocked down, then gets up and try it again. There used to be a song that a young man and a young woman used to sing in the church, if I fall or if I fail. If I fall or if, or, uh, I forget how it goes, uh, let me rise and try again. Forgive me, Lord, and try me one more time. If I fall or if I sin, let me rise and try again. Just forgive me, Lord, and try me one more time. Amen, brother, sister. How many can say amen to that? Amen. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. I misspoke here earlier. One more scripture. Oh. Proverbs 24, 16. For a just man, this is speaking a just man, somebody who's just. Not an evil man. The Bible says, a just man. For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. We get that, brother, sister. A just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. Brother Bram says, if you fall down a hundred times, get up a hundred and one. Get up 101. How many want that power of transformation? Amen. That's why we're all here. That's why we're here this evening. Amen. It's for that transformation. Yes. It's just um, play something soft, Brother Steve. God bless you. Amen. Just every head bowed, every eye closed. Oh, my. I know it's just kind of a simple, broken up, all over the map kind of message, and I'm sorry. But uh, if that's you this evening, church, that desire, that power of transformation, just lift your hand to the Lord. And if you've made mistakes, just rise up and try again, the Bible says. Just raise your hand to the Lord and make that known. God bless all those hands. I raise my hand. Amen. Father, you see all these hands that have been raised, Lord. Father, Lord, and that's why they come, Lord, tonight. You, you've drawn them here, Lord. Just like you, when you draw people, you, you drew the, the, uh, the animals to the ark, Lord. These, these, these are your children, Lord. How much more your children, Lord. No man can come to me unless you draw them nigh. That's what your word says, Lord. Father, they desire, Lord, that change. Oh, Lord, that, that power of transformation to get closer to you, Father. Help your people, I pray for them, Lord. Whatever they're going through, I pray that you be with them. Reveal yourself more to them, Father. We ask these things in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless you, church.
Amen. You appreciate the, the ministry God's place here. Let's stand. Stretch our legs. Key of F. Let's worship the Lord tonight. Appreciate that message, Brother Raul. Amen. Very much. Amen. Let's worship God. Oh, if you're in the battle for the Lord and right, just keep on the firing line. And if you win the victory, brother, you must fight. Just keep on the firing line. Oh, there are many dangers which we all must face. Oh, if we die still fighting, it is no disgrace. And cowards in the service should not have a place. So keep on the firing line. You must fight. Be brave against all evil never run don't even lag behind if you would fight for the lord and the right oh keep on the firing line oh amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm free. But now I'm free. I remember that time. I remember that place where Jesus saved me by his grace. He taught me how to watch and pray and live rejoicing every day. Now God will only use a soldier he can trust. Oh, keep on the firing line. And if you wear the crown, then bear the cross you must. So keep on the firing line. Oh, life is but to labor for the master, dear. Help to banish darkness and to spread good cheer. We shall be rewarded for our service here. So keep on the fire. And what are you going to do? Oh, you must fight. Be brave against all evil oh never run or even lag behind if you would fight for the lord and the right oh keep on the firing line i remember that time i remember that place where Jesus say yes, me by his grace. He taught me how to watch and pray and live rejoice. Oh, you feel like traveling on? Well, yes, I feel like traveling on. I feel like traveling on. Oh, my heavenly home is bright and fair. I feel like traveling on. When we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun oh we've no less days to sing our 
God's praise than when we first begun. I remember that time. I remember that place where Jesus saved me by his grace. He taught me how to watch and pray, live rejoicing every day. Just worship the Lord. Give him a sacrifice of praise. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank the Lord Jesus tonight. Amen. You love him. Let's sing this with our hands raised to him. Amen. More than ever before, I love you, Lord Jesus. Just as we sing to him, it's just you and Jesus tonight. We're going to let you go in a little bit, but let's just worship him, adore him. Close our eyes. Thank him in your own way, what he's done for you. More than ever before in this hour, we want to be closer to him. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. More than ever before. Tell him, Lord, I love you. More than ever before, Lord, I need you. More than ever before, I've got to tell you. Tell them, I love you now. More than ever before, yes, Lord. More than ever before, Lord, I love you. More than ever. someone to care, oh, someone to share all your burdens, oh, like no other can do. He'll come down from the sky. And brush the tears. Oh, don't you just love him tonight? Oh, he's a friend. He's our Lord, a friend. And he cares for you. Let's sing it to him again. Oh, someone to care. Someone to share all your burdens like no other can do he'll come down from the sky and brush the tears from your eyes oh he's your friend and he prayers for Oh, hallelujah. So good. Amen. A day of worship, hasn't it been? Amen. Praise God. We're just going to leave the altar open. Amen. Appreciate. 
Amen. What God has placed here. This is a special group, our ministers, the ministry. Amen. Our brothers who song lead. And my, well, blessed we are. Amen. Praise God. So just pray for one another. Amen. This week, we start our week tomorrow, and the devil's right there to face us, but amen. Greater is he that is within us than he's in the world. We're overcomers. We're in the battle, and it's a fight. But not just any fight, it's a good fight, as the Word of God states. So amen. Can you say amen? You love them. Next service will be Wednesday. 7 p.m. Come out to the midweek service, brother, sister. God will bless you. Amen. Make that sacrifice. Amen. Well, let's bow our heads then and thank the Lord for this day of worship. Heavenly Father, Lord, we're so thankful, God, for another opportunity. It's the day's closing of worship. We start this week, Lord, on the right track. Our batteries are charged, and we're ready, Lord. Our guns are loaded, and we're ready to take that, Father, the front line tomorrow to face that enemy, Lord, just as a soldier would. Not by our power or by my, our might, Lord, but by your spirit. We thank you, Lord, for your people who have come out. They've worshiped. We heard a mighty messages this morning and tonight from our brothers. Bless them, Lord. Strengthen them. Go with your people until we meet once again to worship you on Wednesday. In Jesus' name, all God's people said amen and amen. God bless you. Amen tonight. Amen. Amen. You're dismissed. The altar remained open tonight. Lord, I want to love you more. Than I ever have before You're so easy to adore Lord, I want to love you more And Lord, I want to love you more than I ever have before. You're so easy to adore. Lord, I want to love you more. Lord, I want to love you more. Than I ever have before You're so easy to adore Lord, I want to love you more And Lord, I want to love you more than I ever have before. You're so easy to adore. Lord, I want to love you more. Mm. so easy to adore. Lord, I want to love you more.